Hello, this is Josh Patel back again with another biology video. Today, we're going to be doing chapter 21, which is plant structure and function. We'll be starting on lesson one, which is plant cells and tissues. So our key concept is plants have specialized cells and tissue systems. Plant tissues are made of three basic cells. And this chapter is another one of those specific chapters about certain things. And so this is very specific about plants. And you're probably not going to be asked about much of this. So these three cell types you're probably not going to have to know. So we have parenchyma cells, which are the most common plant cell type. They store starch oils in water and help heal wounds to the plant. They have flexible, thin walls. We have calenchyma cells, and they provide support to a growing plant. They're strong and flexible. So celery strings are strands of these types of cells. So if you ever eat celery, you figure out that they come in long strands. Like if you try to peel it apart, they, it doesn't just break off. It comes in long strands. And when you bite it, you hear crunches. And this is basically the cell wall of a plant. So they have uneven thick cell walls. So as you see here, they're, un they're not all the same size. Then we have sclerenchyma cells. And they are strong plant cell types. So second cell wall hardened by lignin die when they reach maturity, used by humans to make linen and rope. So these are very strong cells and they have like two cell walls basically. Plant organs are made of three tissue systems. We have dermal tissue which covers the outside of a plant, protects the plant. Um, they secrete cutisol of leaves. And these three tissues we have to know, it's one of the things that they're, they will ask you about even though it's very specific. So dermal is the outside, outside layer and forms outer bark of trees. So basically when you think of dermal, you'll think of the outside, the stem and the bark. So we have ground tissue and this is found inside a plant, provides support, stores material in roots and stems, most commonly made of parenchyma. So ground tissue is the inside of it, of the plant and it gives support and it stores everything basically, so the inside of a tree. And then we have vascular tissue which, as we should know, it transports water, minerals, and organ organic compounds. So two networks of hollow tubes. So we have the xylem which transports water and minerals and these two systems we also have to know about the xylem. And then we have the phloem which transports synthetic products, photosynthetic products. So xylem transports water and minerals from the roots to the top of the plant. So xylem we would have from the roots to the leaves. And then phloem transfers from the leaves to the roots or from the leaves to the ground tissue where it stores everything. So a recap here, we have the dermal tissue which would be the outside layer, so the stem. Then we have the ground tissue which is the inside of the stem, basically the meat of the of the plant which it stores everything so it would be this inside layer and then we have the vascular which is the tissue that basically transports things through the cell so the vascular would be the purple spots here and they we have the xylem and the phloem the xylem carries water and minerals from the roots to the leaves and the phloem transports like sugar basically from the leaves to wherever it needs to go which is most likely it's the ground tissue. And then a little review here we have, if you see here, here it's in a circ the phloem is in a circular pattern, or no, here it's in a circular pattern. And so that would probably mean it's a dicot if you remember or recall from the last chapter. So 21.2, the vascular system. Our key concept here is the vascular system allows for the transportation of water, minerals, and sugar. And we learned briefly about this already. Water and dissolved mineral move through the xylem. Okay, yeah, we know that. Xylem contains specialized cells. Vessel elements are short and wide. And then we have thracid. Cells are long and narrow. Xylem cells die at maturity. And this isn't that important, so we don't need to memorize that. It's just showing different types of cells in the xylem. The cohesion tension theory explains water movement. Plants passively transport water through the xylem, so it always happens. And cohesion is the tendency of water molecules to bond with each other. 
So you might have heard of cohesion and adhesion. And it's basically the way water or the way certain liquids move. So cohesion would be that liquids want to be with themselves. So they'll form, they'll come closer together. The molecules will come closer together. And if you have like water on a table, you'll notice that they beat up into little balls. So that would be cohesion. And then adhesion is it wants to stick to other things. So most likely it would be substances substances that are very sticky. So cohesion and adhesion create tension within the xylem that helps move water upwards. And then it's showing. Okay, so basically the way this works, it's easy to show it with a straw. Let's say we have we'll have a straw. Let's say this is a straw here. And then we'll have water in the middle. So it'll be like let's say it comes to this level. Adhesion would want the straw or the water to stick to the walls of the straw and it basically helps the water move through. So just know that cohesion and adhesion help or it's mostly cohesion. Cohesion tendencies help water move through the vascular system. Adhesion is the tendency of water molecules to bond with other substances. So water travels from roots to the top of trees. Absorption occurs at the roots, so as we know the roots absorb minerals and water, so water and dissolved minerals in the soil are pulled into the roots through cell walls, through plasma states, channels, or from cells to cell through uh, their vascules. Cohesion and adhesion in the xylem, so it basically pulls the water up through their stem, and transportation at leaves, or transpiration at leaves, so this is when the water and excess stuff that the leaves don't need it basically s puts them out through the little holes on the bottom of the leaves the leaf stoma so transpiration is the loss of water vapor through leaves water vapor exits the leaf stoma stomata helps pull water to the top branches so the leaves have little holes on the underside of them so if you look at a leaf you probably won't be able to see it but there's like very very tiny holes on the underside of the leaf which releases water. Phloem carries sugar from photosynthesis through the plant. Phloem contains specialized cells and we don't need to know the specialized cells. So sevi tubes elements have holes at the end. Companion cells help sevi tubes elements. Unlike xylem, phloem tissue is alive. So phloem tissue is alive and it moves sugar basically that's all we need to know the pressure fall the pressure flow model explains sugar movement plants actively transport sugar from the source so whenever it makes sugar it just transports it so that would be active and then the difference between active and passive is passive it just normally always does it it doesn't require that much energy and then active it is when it wants to do it so when the plant makes sugar, it wants to move the sugar away. If it, the plant's not making sugar, it won't do it because there's nothing to transport. Sugar flows to the sink due to pressure differences. So sugar moves from their source, such as photosynthesizing leaves, into the phloem. So here we have the leaf. It photosynthesizes. It goes into the phloem, which is this brown, the brownish red tube. Water moves from the xylem into the phloem by osmosis. Due to the higher concentration of sugars in the phloem, the water flow help moves sugar through the phloem, okay? So basically water enters the phloem system as well. And the sugar moves into the sink, such as roots or fruit, where they are stored. So the sugar is stored in fruits, basically. So 21.3, roots and stem. Key concept is roots and stems for the transport system of vascular plants. Roots anchor plants and absorb mineral, mineral nutrients from the soil. So that's very basic. Roots basically give plants the ability to stand up straight and not fall over. Roots provide many functions. Support the plant, absorb transports, and supports nutrients. Root hairs help absorption. So if you look at roots, they have a bunch of little skinny, skinny strands that basically help increase surface area for the root and it helps them absorb more minerals efficiently. There are several parts of a root. They have root cap covers the tip. Okay. 
we have the apical meristem is an area of growth. So it's just where the thing grows. And then vascular cylinder contains xylem and phloem. Okay, so as you see, there's like this little skinny cylinder here. You can kind of see it. There are two main types of roots. So those last things, you didn't really know, you don't know that much, but we need to know there are two types of roots. We have the piborous root system have fine branches. And then the taproot system have one main root. So taproot is usually for things that are the fruit grows on the root more likely. So like onions and potatoes. And then the taproot is basically for plants. They, I mean the fibrous root. Stems support plants and they transport minerals and provide storage, okay? Stems have many functions. They support leaves and flowers, house most of the vascular system, store water, and they also house most of the ground root, or the ground, the ground system, or ground tissue. So grow underground for storage. So some of the root goes on, some of the stem goes underground. And they form new plants. Some stems are herbaceous and conduct photosynthesis. So some stems do photosynthesis. Some stems can some stems can be woody and more protective bark. So basically for trees. The stem is still the bark, it's the same thing, but bark is more protective. Primarily grows increase a plant's length. So secondary growth increase a plant's width, and that's not that important. Tree rings help determine the age of a tree. So here we have a tree and there's different rings of, you know, and you've probably heard that counting the rings, you can count how many years the tree has been grown. So one thing, one circle, it shows, I guess, one year of growth, but you don't need to know how to actually read this. 21.4 leaves. Leaves absorb light and carry out photosynthesis, as we know. So most leaves share some similar structure. The blade is usually broad and flat, collects sunlight for photosynthesis, connects to the stem of a petaloid. Um, okay, so mesofly is between the leaf dermal tissue layers, and this isn't that important. So it's just showing the diagram of a leaf, basically. Guard cells surround each stoma, so this is important, guard cell. So stoma opens and closes when guard cells change shape. When stoma are open, water evaporates and gas exchanges. Stoma closes at night and when plants lose too much water. So this is the, the stoma, and the stoma are the little openings under the leaf of a cell. And they basically let out water and let out let gas exchange. So here we have the stoma, which is a little hole in the middle. And then the guard cells are cells around it that basically contract and expand to open the stoma or close it. Leaves may be simple compound or double compound. Okay, so it's just different types of leaves and we don't even know the different types. So leaf veins may be parallel or pinnate. So parallel veins, as we learned in the last chapter, are <laughs> monocots, while the branch-like or pinnate veins, the ones that are like networks, they're dicots. Leaf margins may be toothed, entire, or lobes. Okay, we don't need to know the different ones. Most leaves are specialized systems for photosynthesis. There are two types of mesofly cells. Both types contain chloroplasts, Plasoids, mesotypes absorb sunlight, and spongy mesoplates connect to stoma. You don't need another two types, but just know that all leaves contain chloroplasts, and that's what basically makes the leaves green. And as we know, chloroplasts are the organelles that collect and absorb sunlight to do photosynthesis. Leaves have many adaptations for extreme temperatures, so for example, pine needles, they can last extreme temperatures. For water loss, we have cactus spines. They don't give off much water. For aquatic environments, we have the water lily. For getting food, we have the Venus flytrap. So that's the end of chapter 21, which is all about plant structure and functions. We learned a lot about plants today. And 
some of this will be on your test, some of it won't be, but just basically know all the things I said that you need to know. And so next time, come back to join us on chapter 22.